really? Really? Nothing in here. No ID. Nothing. So, the lady? Who are you? Who do you work for? The most important. What are we gonna do with you? I can think of a few things. I don't think you're gonna like them. Good night. you're trying to do but paula is on city beat and you can't carry a story like that no offense the chief i have a new source for the story one that implicates carleone we can finally hold he and his cronies accountable Look, i can't run a major story on corruption based on a conversation you overheard at a cocktail party it puts the paper at risk it puts everyone at risk what you overhear in your society beat is not news it's gotham but chief i'm tired of the society beat Yes, I love the attention and the dresses and the parties, but I got into this business as a serious journalist. I can write circles around Paula, and you know that. I was the lead reporter before she showed up. No one's arguing your talent, Veronica. Just be careful what you get involved in. You don't want to become a pawn in the mob's little game. Chief, I am smarter than that. Besides, where is Paula? Her byline's due at 5 o'clock, and no one has seen her all afternoon. I can have my story on your desk in an hour. Veronica, I don't have time, and you don't have the evidence. So regardless of what you think, need, or want to do, your job is fashion and entertainment. So stop boring me and bring me something fashionable and entertaining to run! We've got a deadline! Maybe it's time I call the Tribune. Come in. Shut the door. You want to see me? Paula, Jimmy. She hasn't been in the office all day, and I'm starting to worry about her. Did she say where she was going? Last I heard, she was tracking down a lead on Vincelli. They found another body in the river this morning. It's identified as Tommy Landers, a known associate of Vincelli. That's the fourth body they found in two weeks. Well, it sounds like somebody's trying to send a message or tie up loose ends, but was it Vincelli or Carleone? Pa Paula suggested there could even be another player. A lot of strange things are happening around here. And we may all be in danger. And the last thing I need right now is Veronica on my back competing for the headline. I'm not sure how far this goes up or what we might find when we get there. Well, Chief, it's no secret that Vincelli has ties to the mob, and Mayor Harcourt's always been questionable, but no one's ever been able to prove it. The truth is always out there, kid. Just depends on what you're willing to do to find it. Well, what do you want me to do? Make sure we don't have another Crystal Falcon on our hands. That's the last thing we need right now. Either way, I can't hold Veronica off forever. I've got a story to put out. Try to find Paula. Okay, great. I'll see you then. Thanks again. I owe you. Veronica, you have to back off Paula's story. Stop worrying, Jimmy. I'm sure your little girlfriend is fine. She probably just took the day off. Even Paula's entitled to have a little fun. Philip Harcourt is not a credible source. Just because he's the mayor's son- Philip th is not the source. It's someone else I met at the party. Someone important. Well, who is it? Just wait and see, Jimmy. Let's just say attending the city's parties does have its advantages. And its disadvantages. I'm gonna go find Paula. Everyone worth knowing is in this room tonight. Countess DeFalco is one of our city's wealthiest citizens. 
her decision to sell the Crystal Falcon is top news. And I will finally get Paula off the front page and... Hello there. Jimmy, who is that? It's Vincent DeFalco. He's the son of the Countess, heir to the family fortune. Well, well. Rich and handsome. That's a story I would not mind covering. Ugh, you've got to be kidding. Jimmy! Veronica! You look great. Thanks. It's just the dress. I didn't know what to wear. Fine, Jimmy. You too, Veronica. Jimmy, go take pictures. Okay. Honestly, Perillo, isn't it a little degrading to be following me around like this? I have an invitation. The Countess and my mother are friends. Well, society is my beat, so just back off. <laughs> The crime is part of our investment. I hear she had to sell the Falcon. Really? Gambling debts, I hear. Seems the Count left a bit more than memories. Oh. <laughs> mm. She must be in debt. I've had better bubbly from a bathtub. <laughs> Thank you all for attending tonight's charity auction. As you know, the beautiful Crystal Falcon has been in our family for generations. Our family brought it with us when we started our new life in America. Big city gave so much to us. And now, with my husband gone, the time has come to give back to Big City, starting with proceeds from this auction. I thank you all for coming. Veronica Villancourt, Braves, Vicious Robbery. You found any clues yet, Jimmy? Actually, I'm just taking pictures. This is a big story. High society, scandal. This is front page. I don't get it. With all that you own, why take the Falcon? I'm afraid it wasn't taken for its value alone. The conquest of Eastern Europe pacified many pagan religions, but one still practiced in the shadows, the secret worship of the Crystal Falke. But these are just legends. The falcon is simply a rare antiquity, and now it's just a memory. Are you sure? Paula, give my best to your father. I'm so sorry he couldn't make it tonight.
start of the season turned out so poorly, man. Villancourt. Veronica Villancourt? Don't be. This evening's turning out to be quite the story. Ah, press. Surprising to see someone so beautiful in such a ugly business. Is it? Then it'll just have to do till something better comes along. Well, I may have a side of the story you haven't heard. An exclusive. Very exclusive. The beheadings, disembowelments, impalements. It sounds like my Friday night. Has the professor written back yet? Uh, not yet. You think he's heard of the Falcon? I think I've pieced some of this together. Its origins, at least. The Falcon was a symbol of an ancient Celtic tribe called the Vulcanin. Vulcanins lived in Central Europe between these two mountain ranges, completely isolated from the Roman Empire. In 385 AD, the Roman general Claudius Aurelius found the hidden tribe and forced them into slavery. He murdered the high priest and had its leaders buried alive in caves right here and here. So where does the falcon come in? Some of the high priests survived. He made the ultimate sacrifice to gain the favor of their goddess, Empress Falk. Ultimate sacrifice? It's a metal bird. He sacrificed every woman in the village and used their blood to make that metal bird. Jeez. Empress Falk was so pleased by his offering, she gave him the power to defeat Aurelius and his men. So, what happened to the Vulcanin? Emperor Theodosius dispatched seven legions to annihilate the rebellion. And the Falcon disappeared from history. Till it was given to the DeFalco family. I mean, is it possible that the thieves are familiar with its history? some religious whack jobs trying to recreate the ceremony? Every hundred years, on the night of the equinox, the master of the artifact can perform the ceremony to temporarily harness the power of the falcon. What year was the actual rebellion? 408 AD, 2008. This is a ceremony year. And this is the night of the equinox. I love your house. It's so classic. A little light reading. I think it's important for someone to know their own heritage. Some of it is very enlightening. So, what else can you tell me about the theft, Vincent DeFalco? It was stolen by followers of the Crystal Falcon, Empress of the Air, giver of life, the goddess that requires a sacrifice every hundred years. You are beautiful. <laughs> Sensual. Perfect sacrifice. Prepare the ceremony. I don't think we have to worry about any sacrifice tonight. It says here that only descendants of the high priest can access the power of the falcon. What? What if the DeFalcos didn't acquire the Falcon? What if they inherited it? 
Vulcan and tribe. Empress Falk. Falcon. DeFalco. Vincent DeFalco. Sound familiar? You know, the Countess was selling the Falcon. So he stole it for himself in order to perform the ceremony. Veronica! Which means he's planning a sacrifice tonight. Vincent DeFalco's a religious whack job. Veronica! Anybody seen Veronica? She's supposed to hand in her column hours ago. I don't know, Chief. Last time I saw her, she was talking to this DeFalco. Come on, Jimmy. I'm not writing this. I'm not writing this. Come on, Come on, Anything? This place is like a fortress. Okay. I need a boost. Paula. Jimmy, give me a boost. We only got till midnight. Here. Call the police. this sacrifice and give us your power, the power of eternal life. That's enough of that, Mr. Elincourt. Nobody can hear you. Besides, so unbecoming. This is your fate. From your death emerges eternal life. Our destinies will be intertwined forever. At least he's not afraid of commitment. Kill her. I've chosen. This is my fate. This is my destiny. This is my time. Okay. Lucky I was here to save your skin. 
Lucky me. What are you gonna do with that? It's too dangerous. You still want this story? Yeah. Then this never happened. <clears throat> what about the Countess? She's got bigger things to worry about. Her only son's going away for a long time. So this is my exclusive. It's all yours, Veronica. To be written and interpreted entirely by me. Mm -hmm. Veronica Villancourt. Uncovers evil plot and saves the reporter. How does that sound? Sounds great. And very accurate. Leave us. You will pay for this, Paula Peril. You're awake. I would hate for you to miss a second of what we have planned for you. Of course, me and the boys are gonna have some fun with you before we kill you. It is a dangerous thing to put your nose in the side of business. I know who she is. The legendary Paul Apparel. Paul Apparel? The reporter? I thought she was made up. Is she for real? One and only. What's she doing here? She must think there's a story here. She's snooping around looking for clues. Big story for you. Now enough of this. Finish wiring this place and let's go. Cat and mouse games are over. We have work to do. Thomas' body out of the river this morning with a bullet in his head. I get it, Jimmy. I don't have time to get into this again. I have the lead on this story, not Paula. Veronica, you can't do this. You don't have the evidence. I'm not going to stand by and watch, watch you go. Watch me what? Do my job? If there is one thing I've learned on the social side of town, it's that the truth is negotiable. It is as simple as you want it to be. Randall Wilcott, this is your source? Where is she? Where's Paula? Take it easy, kid. I don't know what you're talking about. Veronica! Jimmy! Look, kid, I appreciate your chutzpah, but this isn't gonna help Paula. Wilcott is the CEO of Vincelli's railroad operation. They're leading us into a trap. Come on, Chief. I hope Veronica knows what she's doing. Paula is in trouble. Trust me. I've been there before. Escape me this T I M E 
One meddling reporter and her scrawny, puny photographer friend can't stand between me and the destruction of the entire C-I-T-Y. The stolen chemicals you've been looking for have been right here all along, directly under the city's main G-A-S. You'll never get away with this. Jimmy knows I'm here. By the time anyone finds you, they'll be picking up P I E C E. Take that, you scum. Who's mm. Mr. Scrawny Puny now, Mr. I'm not so cool as I thought I was. Jimmy, you saved me. And possibly the whole city. That's right, love. Criminals don't stand a chance as long as you have such a strong up for body region. Jimmy. Jimmy. Jimmy? Jimmy! Wake up. Hmm? Slim just called a staff meeting. He says it's urgent. Right. Did you remember your bug spray? Good afternoon, everyone. Sorry I'm late. This is going to be tough, so I'm going to get through it as quickly as I can. You're all aware circulation is down, way down. That causes a big problem. I've got to continue to put out product at a much reduced budget. Uh-oh. Yeah, you can see where this is going, don't you? I don't have enough room in that budget for six field reporters. I admire the work you all do. You're late. What's happening? Slim's letting Paula go. I hate to let any of you go. <laughs> I really do, but... Slim, what are you saying? I've got to let one of you go by the end of this week. Well, how are you going to decide, Chief? Whoever gets the most readers, Wonder Boy. Bingo, you got it. Right on the nose, okay? I want to make my decision based on the quality of the stories you guys bring me in by Friday. You bring me something hot, you keep your job. Wow. Chief, you know, I wouldn't mind taking a pay cut. Always so quick to throw around your family's money, aren't you, Prilla? Remember now, we're still a team. You have to be loyal to the others around you as we go through times like these, okay? Are you with me? Now, go get them! Did it for anyway. I mean, I want to do something that gets me noticed by Carleone, you know? What was that? Joey, did you lock the door? It's not what you... It's not what your mother would want. You running after people who will kill for money and power. You, you can't stop criminals writing newspaper stories. She wouldn't want me to roll over and give up. Like me? I didn't say that. But she wouldn't want us to sit here, eat steaks, and drink wine while her killer ran free. She wouldn't want that. Yes, yeah, she would. Jimmy? Where are you? Are you sure they're Carleone's men? Get what you can, I'll be there in 20. Sorry, Dad, I have to go. It's important. Crime is important? Happy birthday, Elizabeth. So what do you think, another mob hit? 
Yep. Pretty gruesome one. They found pieces of the bodies here, over there, back there, and there. What's that? Now that's just some old newspaper. June 7th, 1934. This is just old bricks. Why would Carly only have men in this old building? Could this place be a hideout? I know just the person to ask. Paula! How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Irene. Hi. This is Jimmy Smith, my partner at the Daily Gazette. Jimmy, this is Irene Frost. Meow. So look at you. You're a reporter. Last time I saw you, I was a legal assistant at the DA's office, and you were a skinny little teenager in a prep school uniform. And now you are Paul Apparel. Ah, <sighs> sit, sit, sit. I bet you are giving your father ulcers on occasion. You know, 10 years ago, I remember it was your mom that had the sleepless nights. She used to call at all hours, wanting an update on your father's latest midnight raid. She was a brave woman, Paula. It was tragic what happened. Thank you. Well, I know you're not here to reminisce, so how can I help you? Well, these are the schematics for the Harcourt Bank building. It was built over 70 years ago, and it was occupied until recently when the bank failures forced them to abandon their lease. Who owns it now? A holding company owns it until the city finds a buyer. Is there anything about the building that would make it ideal for criminal activity? Well, it is centrally located, and we don't exactly spend a ton on security. What is this? A lot of the downtown office buildings have access tunnels for maintenance and sewage. Perfect cover for smuggling. Or snuggling. So tell me, how, uh, how good a partners are the two of you? <laughs> Can you get us the keys? So what are we doing here? Frost said this place has been abandoned for months. Cops have already probably scrubbed all the evidence. They didn't know about the forgotten levels underneath. This is Duke Sillinger, 1930s mobster. He robbed 15 banks, stole millions of dollars worth of gold, then disappeared without a trace. Body never found. Oh, so you think they're looking for the body? They're looking for the money. And if someone else got wind of it, got in the way, presto, two dead bodies. We better be careful. Come on, it's getting dark. I can't believe this place is still standing. It's ancient. According to city plans, this bank was built in a rather infamous mission. I remember reading that it had underground tunnels used to imprison murderers and house the dead, thinking the lost souls would punish them. Oh, fantastic. You're not afraid, are you? No, I love imprisoned murderous lost souls. It's like they're still digging. Hey, you there! Run! Come on. We're trapped! Let's hide back here. Tell us loot! There they are. Hey, stay away from her. Sorry, I'm good, man. My editor knows where I am. I'm not back in an hour. He's gonna send the cops to look for us. <laughs> Is that so? See, I'm willing to bet you haven't told anyone about this little hunch. <laughs> That's why I let you find your way in here, so we can be alone and uninterrupted. Irene, what's going on? Oh, you are such a Girl Scout. Do you honestly think I can make a living in this economy? <laughs> With a government job? See, Carleone, 
much more generous. We find the gold, and I get a sizable percentage. As a matter of fact, a contractor found gold in this very basement just the other day. But before he could tell anybody where it was, he suffered death from a rare asthma condition. Yeah, concrete asphyxiation. <laughs> Monsters! Now we have to close up shop, cover my tracks, all because someone is on to us. See, I can't have the deaths lead back to me. What are you gonna do with me? Do you know what concrete is made of? Grit. Ah, see? And you have that by the wheelbarrow, sweetheart. It's a shame. I really do admire you. <sighs> Let's get the other one. Ghost? <laughs> what do you want? Wait, you're Duke Sillinger. In the event of my death, please give this money to the city orphanage. Please use it to keep other children from the life of crime I have known. Forgive me for what I have done. Well, ghosts like revenge, right? Let's see what we can do. Paula? Can't afford to have any more reporters sharing any of my secrets now, can I? Where's Paula? I swear, if you did anything to her, I'll... You'll... I'll... Oh, you'll what? You'll stop I'll... acting like a baby and tell her how much you really love her? Oh, please do so before we kill you both. My new friend doesn't like you taking his money. Just us and a bag of gold. We're rich? No, but the orphanage is. Come on, let's get back to the office. We got a story to write. So the police confirm your report. They dig up the foundation, they find the body of the murdered contractor. I don't know how in the world you knew that body was there. What the devil have you got for a source? <laughs> a very reliable one. <laughs> Congratulations, it was a hell of a story. Thanks, Chief. 
You know, it's pretty brave of you to stand up to frost men like that. You could have been killed. That's right, love. Criminals don't stand a chance as long as you're around, Jimmy. Thank you. Wait, what's our next story? Hey, Veronica, it's the end of the week. I made my decision. I need to see you. This isn't over, Perillo. I am not someone to be messed with, and I will get you for this. Thanks again for your time. You're welcome. I'm old. I've got grandkids to think about. I've had my indiscretions, but it's time to clean up this city. I'll be in touch as soon as the story runs. Let's see what the mayor has to say then. Very well. Hey, it's me. We're done. They bought it. Wonder what they'll say about this. Sorry about earlier. I had to get them out of the building. Thanks. Who are you? The one who called you. Why are you helping me? Listen, I'll explain it another time, but for now, just listen. It's the finance director. She's the one you need to talk to. She has all the records. Enough evidence to put Vincelli away for good. I didn't think I'd get out of that one. I think you're going to be around for a while. Try to stay out of trouble. This little meeting of ours never happened. Take care, Paul Perrault. I enjoy watching you work. How did you know that Wilcott would talk? Chief, you know a good reporter never tells. I have powers of persuasions that little goody two-shoes Paula can only dream of. I don't trust him. And besides, we haven't answered the most pressing question of all. Where is Paula? I'm here, Jimmy. I got what I was looking for. Oh, Paul, where have you been? Are you okay? Why didn't you call? I was a little tied up. Glad you're okay. Chief, you gotta hold the late edition. I've got a credible lead. Someone in Vincelli's organization is ready to talk. Give me 24 hours. I'll have everything you need. Too late, Paula. Paper's ready to go to press. Paul, what happened to you? You look like you ran here. It's nothing. Chief, you can't run this story. The mayor will sue us. You can't accuse him of labor union tampering. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Not this time, Perillo. You are not going to take my story. No. Veronica, I don't know who gave this information, but it's simply not true. Someone's using you. How do you know? Because Vincelli and Carlione are smarter than we think, and they'd like nothing better than to shut down the Daily Gazette for good. Paul, are you sure you're OK? I'm fine. I'm just a little shaken up. You know what? Run it. I'm tired of arguing. Just know it's wrong. Whatever, Paula. You're just jealous. No, Veronica, I'm not. I'm tired. So, do what you want to do. You win. Uh, uh, Paul, wait. I just need some time. Hold the press! What? Chief, don't... You're sure about this? It's Vincelli's finance director. She's ready to talk. I knew it!
What is Vince Vincelli's response to the commissioner's accusations of bribery and corruption? Where is Vincelli? Is he afraid of an attempt on his life? Where is the company's finance director and her staff? Are they in hiding? No formal charges have been filed, and Mr. Vincelli has no statement at this time, so please leave the premises. That's enough. Time to go. I didn't think you'd make it. I always keep my promises, even if they require me joining the maintenance crew. This is what we discussed. Money transfers, bank statements, copies of emails, and freight manifests. If this matches Vincelli's bank records, the DA will have the evidence he needs. I'm grateful. And were you able to get what I need? Here are the tickets you requested. You and your daughter will be safe in Rio until the case goes to trial. Why are you doing this? I don't even know your real name. Let's just say I lost someone once. Someone like you who got caught in the middle. Sometimes doing the right thing is dangerous. I was ordered to wipe all of these records last night. It's a detailed inventory of all the goods that Carleone has shipped out of the city over the last six months. Something in this file has been Sally very nervous. Perhaps a reporter like Paula Perro can get to the bottom of it before it's too late. Well, let's hope so, for all our sakes. Paul Apparel. You. Meet me on the south side of the building. off the roof.
You're almost there. Oh. Oh. I made the exchange. But I think I've got a lead on an even bigger story. Oh. Oh. Come on. We got work to do. Did you just jump off a building? I don't need you, I can handle this. They got nothing on me. Carleone doesn't share your confidence, Vince. He says you aren't creative enough. You're sloppy, and we're the ones doing all the dirty work. You know the rules, Vince. Or do I need to remind you? It's all over if we can't shut up that reporter. She's getting too close. She could expose the whole operation. She's the one you need to be worried about, not me. It's up to Carleone to decide if there's a contract on Paula Peril. But for now, this is your problem, and I suggest you fix it. Fast. She's got informants on the inside. Get me the goods on her and I'll find out who's loyal. I can make this right. I'll see what I can do. Daily Gazette. I can't get to the phone right now. Leave your message after the beep. Paula, it's Dad. I've discovered something. Something important. You were right. We do need to work together. Call me as soon as you get this, please. If I don't hear from you, I'm gonna look into it myself. It happened so fast. It's like they came out of nowhere. Three men firing automatic weapons, and they shot her right there, on the museum steps. And there was nothing I can do to help her. Do you remember anything, anything at all, that might help us identify these men? Each of them had a, a circular tattoo on their forearm. A circle with strange symbols. What were you thinking? All of us go out of our way to protect your identity, keep you safe, and you're out breaking and entering, tearing things up! Vincelli's threatening a lawsuit! Technically, Chief, I was invited. Oh, and I suppose jumping off the building was your way of getting exercise. Vincelli's finished. It's over. And besides, this story is selling papers out all over town. What is the problem? Look, I've worked in this town long enough to know the mob's not gonna let this go. Paula, let the DA take it from here. Stay low for a few weeks. I'm begging you. That's not my style, Chief. There's more to this story. I know it. Jimmy, get her to take some time off. I'll see what I can do. You know, maybe he's right, Paula. We'll let the DA handle this one. This is serious business. Jimmy, it playing it safe won't help this city. Here. Take a look at this. Call me later. For you, Miss Bellancourt? The usual. Put it on my tab? <sighs> Sorry. Your credit's no good here. You mind if I buy you a drink? I'm not sure. Who am I drinking with? I'm Scott, City Times. 
I am a big fan of your work, Miss Villancourt. The Times. So I'm drinking with the enemy. How dangerous. A friendly competitor. A fan. Besides, I wasn't sure you were still with the Gazette. I thought their main attraction now was this... Paul Apparel. I'm freelance at the moment. More opportunity. And don't talk to me about Paula Apparel. Hey, she doesn't impress me. You know all it takes is a little dirt. And today's celebrities are tomorrow's footnotes. I know a thing or two about that spoiled do-gooder. I'm all ears. What is this place? <laughs> Personnel records. You want to know about Paula Apparel? Mm -hmm. Watch this. Her real name is Paula Perillo. Her rich daddy was the district attorney and gave her my position on city desk, the one I worked towards for three years. He's top reporter now. You are. I trust this won't be a problem. Me and the boys will take care of this right away. Good. Not a problem. Are you sure this is what you saw? Well, it's been 10 years since the day your wife was murdered. But that, that was the mark on the gunman's arms. I'm sorry, that's all I can tell you. It's not safe for me to be here. Okay, so you ready to go through this? Sure. What do you got? Well, it's a materials list. Machine parts, hydraulic drills, specialized chemicals. And it's a pretty long list. What are you doing? I'm getting ready for bed. Oh. So what are the parts for? Oh, uh, well, let's see. Uh, dual walled pilot tubes, hydraulic power drive rods, steering joints, jacking frames, centrifuges, decanters, utility clamps. Well, that's all gibberish to me, Jimmy. Can you translate? It's specialized construction equipment. I don't know what you do with it. However, one of the shipments did include nitrocellulose, a polymer that can be combined with other materials to make explosives. Uh, polymers and plastics like that can be combined with aluminum powders or TNT to create unstable materials like nitrogen triodide. Hold on. Here's something interesting. I cross-checked the parts and found that they come from a European distributor that specializes in boring and tunneling equipment. Carleone must have spent a fortune on this equipment. The only way he could have gotten it into the city is by train. This is what they use for massive tunneling projects. He could be preparing for something big. I, uh, hold on, that's the delivery guy.
see you like it, right? <laughs> Hey, sorry that took longer than I thought. Paula? Sally's goons. What are you all right? Paula, it's your dad. Sorry. Ms. Villancourt's ID card was used to access the building after hours. Her login was used to access Ms. Perrell's employment file to create the report we found on the assailant last night. Veronica, what did you do? I, I met a guy. He said he was a reporter for the Times. We had a few drinks. We talked about Paula. That was it. What did you tell him? Well, I probably shared more than I should have. In the morning, I tried to look him up, but there was no one with his name at the Times. Veronica, this isn't a game. What were you thinking? OK. I messed up. How could you do such a thing? To a member of your own team, to your family? I hope you throw the book at her. I I'm sorry. We're gonna have to take both of you down to the station for questioning. Take her away. Let's go. I assume you want to press charges. No. I'm sure the paper want to avoid the scandal. I don't think she knew what would happen. It's Vincelli who's responsible. He's the one that needs to be stopped. A friend like you. Hey. In case you change your mind, give me a call. I'm more than happy to offer my services. You're like you could use some protection. Thank you. I'll be sure to call if there's any trouble. So, you're going after Vincelli, aren't you? This is too dangerous. You're right. I should take care of this myself. That's not what I'm saying. Look, I thought we were in this together. Of course, but this isn't about stopping wacko cultists or hunting for mobster corpses. This is serious, and they've crossed a line. Uh, listen! Look, I, I know your dad got No! Jimmy, you don't know. First my mother, then my father. I have no one left. Look, you're wrong. You've got me, and whether you like it or not, I am going to be there to watch your back. Partners? Partners. Okay, but I'm driving. Well, great. I'll go get my camera bag. Miss Perillo, Lawrence Scott, City Times. You mind if I ask you a few questions? You're Lawrence Scott? Get the girl inside. Vincelli's waiting. All right. Got it? 
I got it. Right. So this is Paula Peril? <laughs> Seems Carleone overestimated your abilities. I'll make you a deal. You give me the names of your informants within our organization, I'll let you live. <laughs> What is Carleone building under the city? Why all the explosives and tunneling equipment? You have touched the tip of a very dangerous iceberg. I told you we were going to have to get rid of her and I could handle it. You can scream if you want to. <laughs> There's no one around to hear you for miles. <laughs> Now, I am going to ask you one last time. I think you will like this. I have something very special in mind for you. I can't get to the phone right now. Leave your message after the beep. Paula, where are you? Call me. What? Thought the cops wouldn't let me go? I'm worried about Paula. I don't know why she left without me. Honestly, Jimmy, you're obsessed with her. You wouldn't know what to do without her. From the moment she first walked into the Gazette, you two have been inseparable. It's disgusting. You're right. Wait, she's in trouble. Her cell phone. I set up a GPS app that would automatically check in at targeted locations around town in case we ever got separated tracking down a lead. I can use that to find the last position she passed. Why don't we work together, Jimmy? What's so special about Paula? Because while everyone's trying to ignore what's going on, Paula takes it head on. The city needs more people like that. I want to be like that. How's this for creative? I don't know about creative, but it sure does make a statement. The 1155 out of town will be a fitting end to your life. That's okay. I'm a photographer. Check it out. I'll stay here with the girl.
Until he's dead. Yeah, but he talked. She may know everything by now, Mr. Corleone. In that case. It would appear that dear Paul Apparel has just outlived her usefulness. What are your orders, sir? 